Welcome to the castle everybody. This is Nightsaber Z42 and you're ready for something spooky because today I'll be reviewing Dead Planet, the first official adventure for Mothership, the sci-fi horror RPG. Let's dive into it. So here we have the physical copy of Dead Planet. This was written by Fiona Maeve Geist with Don Stroud and Sean McCoy. Sean McCoy is still doing illustrations, but this time around he is joined by Stephen Wilson, which is a good thing. So on the very back of the book, you will actually have a, a, a chart for I Search the Body for the Derelict Craft, the Moon Colony, and then the Red Tower. So this book is actually three different adventures, generally located around the same area. Um, this all takes place around the dead planet, and we'll kind of get into that a little bit later. So three different adventures, three different locations, all kind of centralized. That's pretty much how this module works. So the very first module that you're going to have is called the Screaming on the Alexis, and the Alexis is a ship that the players can come across. So you're going to have to find a way to get your players to this actual planet, or rather the area where this planet's at, because when they actually get to this area, or around the planet and the moon that is in this area, uh, they're gonna find that their jump drives don't work. They can, act, they can no longer go into hyperspace, basically. And so you get a little bit of information about that and what happens, as well as some of the threats. And so the players can actually go into this nice ship called the Alexis. It's going to be the one that's closest to them when they actually come away from hypersleep or something like that. And so I really love the detail on this map. So you have this map, right? And ships are usually uh, multi-floored or multi-story. So you actually get like the first floor and then you have run down to the second floor. And for each of the rooms, you actually get a little blurb as well as anything relevant. So you're not just getting the picture on one page and then the next page has a list of all of the different areas that you can go to, like you find in Dungeons and Dragons books. No, everything you need is on this two page spread right here. And I love that. Even the vents that are connected have a nice pink arrow so you can actually see how they're all connected. And that's really good. I really like that. The only thing that I kind of wish that they had done a little bit differently is that they would draw your attention a little bit better to um, something that's uh, pertinent for the entire map, like the airlocks right here. So all airlocks controlled remotely are all airlocks controlled remotely by the command room. Opening them manually requires a strength check. I wish that was like maybe in a different colored box so that way my eyes instantly go there, but that's just a minor nitpick. So let's say that your players are in this ship graveyard and they've explored the Alexis and they want to explore some of the other ships. There's actually a derelict ship generator. So you roll 1D10 or 1D100 and you can either read across or you could roll 9D100s and read the results for each of them. So you would start here with the ship class, the status, what salvage there is, the cause of ruination, anything weird happening, as well as the cargo type. So it's all right here. And you can always opt in the option to actually pick your favorites and create something interesting. I really love that there's a way to actually map out the derelict ship because that's something that I'm not really good at. I'm not really good at mapping things. And when I was reviewing the Mothership Player Survival Guide, that was one of my nitpicky points that there's so much detail and they really want you to map out the ship, but I'm not good at that. And so what they did is they say, um, roll a bunch of D6s and then arrange them and stuff like that. And that's really cool. That's the kind of ingenuity that I'm really glad that's in the book like this. Of course, let's say that your players haven't figured out that their jump drive isn't working and they actually try to jump into hyperspace. There's actually a malfunction list that you can roll on. There's also some weapons and supply caches that they can find some on some of the other derelict ships. 
And then we get into the next section. And so there are some threats on this first uh, adventure. There are these creatures that are kind of like roaming around. It's, it's not very clear what they are. But by the end of the third adventure, uh, there you will find out where they're coming from. They're called gaunts in this book. So you actually encounter some gaunt walkers. You can also find some gaunt hounds, which are very scary, and some gaunt crawlers. And so these gaunts are like, I don't want to say shadow creatures because that doesn't really match up, but they're big and scary and they will totally eat your face if they come in real close to you. So be aware of them. And they actually just kind of spawn in, which is also kind of weird. So then we get to the second adventure, the Moon Colony Bullet Bath, and this takes place on the dead planet's moon. So you're not actually going to the dead planet just quite yet. And this is... I, I know that there's a lot of GMs that have a little bit of some trouble with this one, but hear me out. There's a quick fix for this. So let's say that your players get back to their ship after encountering the dangers on the Alexis, and they're wondering what they're supposed to do. Well, basically, there are these people that are living on this moon, and one of the or one of the uh, peoples or groups of people live in a junk or live in a salvage uh, yard, a junk yard, and so they have this giant harpoon that they shoot from the moon to any ships that happen to come by, and they pull them into the moon. So that's one way that you can do it. That's the way that the book says. But for me, I know that maybe some of my players would like stop, scratch their head, and say, "What?" So what I would do, I would actually change that to something a little bit more sci-fi-y. I would say that maybe there's like some sort of a tractor beam that they like use to grab ships that are close to the moon and bring them down. So that's kind of how I would kind of rework things a little bit. And remember, in Mothership, you can take and pull and break apart and fix it back together just the way that you want it. So there are different areas on this moon planet that the players can go to. They can actually get lost in the dunes on the moon, which is pretty scary because you're going to have to worry about oxygen and stuff like that. You can go to different types of wrecks. You can actually go to the, the scrap yard, and then you can actually go to the moon base itself. Now, without spoiling things a little bit too much, um, there are people living on this moon. And one of the very first things that you can read is uh, why these people are on that moon. Like, what happened 10 years ago, 18 days ago, one week ago, and what's happening now? And so there's basically like a whole expedition that, that created this research base here on the moon, and they've been researching the dead planet and stuff like that. So your standard sci-fi stuff. You will have to worry about food and water while you're here, um, especially food. So then let's say that you meet the groups of people on the moon. There's actually a couple different groups, um, but one of them is actually on the said research station. And these people are, well, let's just say that they're frightening. I'm not going to spoil any of that, of that, but if you want to read what's here on the camera, that's fine. But your players are given some pretty difficult decisions. If they want to actually stay with this group of people and interact with them, they're going to actually be asked to do some pretty horrific things. I'm just going to leave it at that. You actually get a fairly nice map of the Beggar Moon Base right here. And it does list out um, the different areas with paragraph, just like in your standard Dungeons & Dragons book, which that is fine. I mean, you can't always have a really cool spaceship map like in every adventure or book and then you have the actual scrapyard or a different uh, base and how that all interconnects to each other you also get some broadcasts that your players can discover and there's all sorts of different characters to interact with and basically side with or just screw over so it's a little bit of a political game right here where you actually can choose a side and help them out uh, in terms of getting favor. And I really like how uh, there's different endings. There's different ways of getting off of this. And one of those ways is actually just helping one of the groups out and then hitching a ride on their spaceship. But that's kind of like not the bad ending. I would call that more of a neutral ending because you're actually going to spend like 100 years in hypersleep, basically. So not the most favorable of endings, but it is an ending that doesn't result in your death, most likely, hopefully. 
So then you have all sorts of different rollable charts for different quirks for colonists and survivors. And then you search the vault, you roll a D100. Then of course there's the threat. And there's a nice little table at the very beginning of this section that says what happens on what day. And if you let things escalate, um, stuff will definitely hit the fan and it doesn't smell good. So those little uh, creatures that you encountered on the Alexis are going to start spawning in for some reason and you still have to figure out why. You also have nightmares that are happening to everybody. So every time you go to sleep, you actually have to make a save. And if you fail that save, you actually start getting a nightmare. Now, when you're actually on the moon, you only roll for that like every couple of days or something like that. But by the time you actually make it to the dead planet, you're rolling on that table like every day. So speaking of the dead planet, let's say that you actually manage to get off of the moon, or maybe you circumvent that whole section entirely and you go straight to the dead planet. So you have this nice little 3D map of the area that your players can go to, and there's some different areas to actually explore. They're going to see something called the Dead Gateway, which they can interact with and probably die if they try to go there. There's a swamp, there's the Red Tower, there's like a stone quarry, and then the Necropolis. So if you have any scientist type characters, they might get some strange readings coming from the Necropolis or maybe they've been sent to this place in order to find um, some of the researchers, which would be at the Red Tower. So as a GM, things are left quite open for you and vague a little bit. And when I was first reading through this, I had a very negative reaction to that. But then I had to remember this is an OSR game and OSR games really do leave that interpretation to the GM for better or for worse. And so when I actually started thinking about how I would run this adventure, I started piecing things together and really asking myself, why are the players here? Um, what is their end goal and how can I kind of maybe get them to that goal while still accessing a majority of the content? Because they don't have to go to that moon base. They could actually get around that if you have a pilot that's really good. But anyways, there are some different areas to explore on the dead planet with some nice rollable charts for different encounters and stuff like that, which is really cool. And then you get an explanation of the necropolis, which is one of the end goals um, that the players can encounter. And without kind of spoiling it, um, they can actually succeed in disrupting whatever is causing all the jump drives to basically malfunction. Or they might even go to the Red Tower, which is a science research or like a military base kind of like a research station. And they could go through that whole entire dungeon. And there's this really cool map for the different layers, which I really do like. Um, it's actually multi-page because there's like four different floors. And they can go through that section and um, possibly save the planet? Question mark, question mark, question mark. It's kind of really weird how this whole adventure, or at least this part of the adventure, kind of goes. So there's like multiple ways to go about an ending. And there's like three different endings too. So like there's an ending where the players uh, save the day, where they survive, and then where they do something else. And I can't remember what that's called. I, I remember Sean McCoy um, actually explaining it on a podcast um, once. And it, I was like, that's actually brilliant. Why haven't... I why don't I play like that? But then again, I don't run horror games, so um, this would actually be the first horror game that I will actually introduce to my players quite soon. So overall, this is a really interesting adventure. Um, you can actually play any of these three scenarios uh, as a one-shot or kind of connect them together, and I, that's kind of like what I would do. I, the only thing I really wish is that they would give some suggestions on how to do that, like, you know, like little prompts of how to get your players from A to B and stuff like that. Um, but overall, this is a pretty solid adventure, and I can see why it's gotten a lot of awards that it has. My only gripe with this, and this is the same gripe that I had with Mothership, but for different reasons, is about the creatures. So my main gripe with the actual player survival guide with Mothership was that there weren't any creatures. And... Here, my gripe is that there are creatures, but nothing is really explained. 
So you have the map on one page, and then you flip the page, and now you have all the creatures. So things like combat speed, instinct, and hit, those aren't explained. And I kind of wish that they would have at least done a quick little explanation. I mean, I know that it's sort of explained here in Mothership in the mercenary section, but I really wish that they would have fleshed that part out here. Why are there two numbers for hits? I'm assuming that one is like just in general, you hit this creature six times and it's dead. Or if you want to do like HP, you hit this creature for 45 hits or, eight, or 45 hit points worth and it's dead or something like that. It would have been really nice to include something like that just as a quick refresher. But overall, I really do like this book. The artwork, again, is going to be something that you're either really going to love it or you're really going to hate it. For me, the artwork for the creatures is a little bit of a eh. And the only reason why I say this is because of the actual color scheme. So the black on the pur dark purple, it just doesn't do it for me. I'd rather have more detail to see a little bit of it. But then I guess that doesn't really lend itself to horror. Um, the horror is all about kind of your expectations and kind of throwing it out there. So having stuff where you can't quite see all the details and plays with your mind a little bit. That's kind of the, hor the horrific part of it all, I guess. Um, for some of these, I actually don't recall actually being listed in the book, so in the adventure itself. So I probably didn't read hard enough, but then again, it has been a couple days since I've actually read through this. So anyways, that is kind of my overall review. I am actually planning on running this game with my players uh, after we finish our current Star Wars campaign. And it would be really nice to see some more adventures like this. I know that there's a ton of community-made adventures, but I would really love to see like official adventures that kind of flesh out the game a little bit more. Because remember, Mothership is a rules-like game. The rules are supposed to be easy and fast. And so I really would like some more supplements that kind of expand on that. So there we go. Feel free to leave a comment down below. Give this video a huge thumbs up to support the series and subscribe if you would like to see more. And I will see you guys in the next video.